Good evening, everyone. I now call this meeting to order. Thank you for joining us. Interim Secretary Dykes, can you please take roll? Uh, Vice President Abdul Salam. Senator Alfila. Senator Benitez. Senator Bradford. Director Williams. Senator Busum. Director Delaney. Director of Academic Affairs present. Senator Duclair. Senator Senator Ellington. Senator Hale. Treasurer Har. Treasurer Har present. Senator Hussein. Senator Ingrando. President Keller. Senator Lefebvre. Director Lopez. Senator Magar. Senator McGinnis. Senator Rachman. Senator Ray. Senator Rumba. Senator Snell. Senator Vidir. Director Watkins. Thank you very much. Is there a motion on the floor to approve the 57th meeting minutes from the last meeting? Senator Duclair. Thank you, ma'am. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we like this. So um, now we are going to move into office reports. And I am really excited to welcome our first speaker. And I've been practicing her name for the last three minutes. It is Cousin Tiskowski? Butchered it, so sorry. Um, from <laughs> Department of Sports and Recreation, she has a presentation for us. Please give her your full attention, as you always do, and ask some fun questions. Thank you. The floor is yours. Got a mic here for you, if that works. Is it kicking it? There it is. So hi, yes, I'm Carrie Kazankowski. I'm from the Department of Sports and Recreation, and I have had three cups of coffee today, so I apologize if I talk fast. I do anyway. So for those of you that aren't familiar with our department, it's quite large. I'm going to focus primarily on rec programs, but I'm certainly available if you have any questions that I can answer. So just quick show of hands, anyone who's ever been to one of our facilities? Some, but not all. Cool. So our Kennesaw campus facility is so close, right over there. And I won't go into super detail. You can see the slides. You can see it for yourself. But we have 174,000 square feet of recreational space. And that includes everything from racquetball courts to an indoor and outdoor pool and spa. And so lots of great options to just come in and casually recreate. Next slide, please. Nice little by nighttime view of our facility. All right, and also we have um, our sports and recreation park, the Owl's Nest, kind of close to the stadium and the perch, and that's where we have some synthetic fields. We have a beautiful walk-jog trail around the, around the lake. If you've ever participated in our Daffodil Dash or Tricky Trot, that's where we have those um, great outdoor facilities. Next slide, please. Beautiful shots there of the Owl's Nest facility up top and the perch on the bottom. The Owl's Nest at the top is really where we house our competitive sports programs, the intramural and uh, club sports programs. Next slide, please. 
And at our Marietta campus facility, um, we have a lot of great options as well. It is a smaller facility, but we really try to make things, um, you know, on a smaller scale, equitable. So we do have a pool there. We have a great group fitness studio, some strength and conditioning spaces as well. And some pictures there. And now my favorite part, I get to talk about our programs, which is really the near and dear to my heart. So next slide, please. Cool, so the outfit fitness programs, go ahead and go straight to that first little bubble up there. So our group fitness program, um, what some of you may or may not know, is that group fitness classes are included in your student fees. So you're already paying for them, you may as well come. They are um, not something you have to pre-register in advance, you just show up and participate. And all of our instructors, um, train and prepare to expect that we're going to have a range of participants from people that are brand new, never tried it before, to people that are more experienced. So we really try and um, give a, a series of modifications throughout the class to make everyone feel comfortable. And we do have quite a variety that changes every semester. We have a lot of wonderful in-house um, fitness trainers and instructor team. And I say in-house rather than students, because students makes it sound like, well, they're still in training. But these are um, nationally you know, certified professionals that have credentials that could are recognized internationally. So um, top-notch instructors and trainers. So we can go to our next slide. And we also have a personal training program. So what's great about the personal training program is if you're getting started or even if you've been working out for a while, sometimes everyone needs a little nudge, a little boost to try something different. And that's really where the personal training program can, can come in. So it's that personalized experience um, for you. And um, I myself am a, am a user of that program. I really benefited quite a bit. I had an injury in the fall. I tore my Achilles. So I know it was awful, and um, they've been. <laughs> it really was. And I have a, a two-year-old and a five-year-old, and they were not sympathetic. So um, yes, I've come a long way. It's been it's been a long journey. <laughs> Next slide, please. And it's a little bit just of a information about our program. And this is all on our website. So don't feel like you need to, you know, take pictures. It's all on our website. If if for some reason that and it is kind of small. Here I go, I'm talking really fast. Fitness on the Fly program is that customized fitness experience. So um, what we found is that groups are coming to us and asking, hey, can we get a, a yoga class for our sorority or fraternity or for this club? And so we start you know, making a more formal um, process where people can request that. So we do have a request form on our website. You complete your information, we'll send you a quote. You're still under no obligation at that point. You get the information, decide if it's right for you. So it's, it's been very popular. Next slide, please. Small group training. Small group training I like to describe as a great in between our personal training and group fitness program. So with small group training, it is like it sounds, it's gonna be a smaller group and usually there is a focus to the group. So the focus might be women on weights, it might be cycle fit, it might be Pilates reformer. And so what's cool about small group training is you do have the same participants week after week after week, so you can really build on the skills and progress together as a team and support each other as a team. And it's, it's very cool to see how everyone's kind of progressing together. A um, little more cost effective than personal training. Obviously, we have a, a bigger ratio of instructor to participants, um, but a great option. And we will have some of those even in the summer. So we're gonna, we're actually thinking about launching a new one um, in the Maymester as well. So we'll have those throughout the year. Thank you. And special events. Uh, we have a number of special events throughout the year. So right now we have our Bike, Bike Across America CrossFit Incentive Program Challenge. That's not really the name. That's just all the things I can think of to describe it. So it is an incentive program to get you trying new things. And if you participate in a certain number of classes throughout the challenge, you're eligible to win a yoga mat and some other great prizes. Um, last semester, we had a glow-in-the-dark cycling event, which is a lot of fun. Um, you're on the bike, right? So you can't fall over each other and, and uh, bump into things in the dark. So you had little glow necklaces. We turned the lights down. It was a lot of fun. We have outdoor yoga classes, just a series of things throughout the year. And we also have professional fitness development opportunities. Um, so, as I mentioned, all of our in-house instructors and trainers have great credentials, and we know that sometimes it can seem like a big step to go from, I like it, it'd be great to do something like that, but I have nowhere to begin. So we actually had developed some prep programs that can help you go from, no idea what I'm doing, but I like it, 
to getting out there and teaching and training. And so we call it our PT and our group fitness prep programs. And actually, applications are currently being accepted for the fall. The deadline is actually this Friday. So if you're interested, let me know, and I'll get you in touch with them quickly. Um, but it's a great program. Really kind of makes it bite-sized pieces where you can absorb the information and get going. And I'm, I'm a big believer in this. I'm a big proponent of this, because actually my undergrad um, was in telecommunications, marketing, and pop culture. So I actually did, yeah, I did a program kind of like this at my institution. It changed the trajectory of my career. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in student development, given these opportunities, because it really can make a difference. Other things, um, you're good, stay there. Um, other things that we offer is we do have workshops and trainings throughout the year. So whether you work with us directly or not, we bring in nationally recognized organizations to our campus like TRX, Schwinn, ACE, ACSM. I know there's a lot of acronyms and that may not be familiar with you, but these are um, top of the industry folks in the fitness industry that come. And what's great is a win-win. So we get to bring these opportunities to the KSU community and they get to share their great information with um, all of us. And so they'll bring in a master trainer. And so that's, that's independent of what we do directly, but we're a host facility. So lots of good opportunities there. Let's talk about aquatics. Look at our beautiful pool, it's so nice. Okay, so our Kennesaw Indoor Outdoor Pool and Spa is a 25 yard, eight lane indoor pool. Um, great place just to come and swim some laps and, and recreate. Next slide, please. A Marietta's Campus Pool um, is a little bit smaller, it's six lanes, but um, again, we do have lots of good options for lap swim, drop in recreation. And we do have a beautiful little patio out there and a series of special events coming this summer. So next slide, please. Aquatic programs. This is actually some of the newer programs for our department. We have an aquatics coordinator that's been with us since May. And since she began, they just exploded. The special events that we have, the swim lessons that we have. Right now with the swim lesson program, those are available to um, KSU students, faculty and staff that are members. So anyone who pays the rec fee is a member and would have elig you know, be eligible for this program. Um, we are looking to expand that to even folks who are not members and um, eventually community coming this summer, which is really exciting. Um, as I mentioned, the little ones, we're gonna have youth programs. So we're gonna have youth swim lessons, yeah, for, um, for and there'll be, what's cool too is, you know, it's gonna be scaled. So if you're a member, it's one price versus a not member versus community. So that's coming this summer, probably starting in June. Check our website. As I mentioned, it's a newer program, so we're still getting the websites where we want them to be, um, but we're getting there. And you can always, I'll leave my cards and you can always, you know, email me directly and I'll shoot you where you need to be. Uh, next slide, please. And so that's just a snapshot of what it is for adults. Aquatic special events. Um, we have a lot of really cool events. Last semester, we did our cardboard boat regatta as part of homecoming week, and people built boats and raced them across the pool. It's as hilarious as it sounds. Last week, we had a dive-in movie on the Merida campus. We showed Aquaman. Um, we have an inner tube water polo tournament coming up, but we just have a lot of fun. We have canoe battleship. We had that during Week of Welcome in August. Um, we have some pool parties coming up this summer. I think in July we're going to have um, a big kind of water festival fun day. We're going to have like an inflatable water slide, and um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, and I, I'll just have to work that event. I'm trying to think of other things. We're going to have Moana as a dive-in movie in June. So lots of really great things. It might turn into a sing-along, we'll see. <laughs> Next slide, you can see some pictures. It definitely will, yeah. So those are some great events. On the top left, that's our uh, cardboard boat regatta. You can kind of make out the dive-in movie. People are in inner tubes. We provide the inner tubes. And then the uh, uh, canoe battleship on the bottom. Yeah, you can move along. And so I'm gonna go through these really quickly. These are not my direct uh, oversight, but I, I just wanna make sure that you get the information. So we do have a great outdoor adventures program, and that includes the climbing gym facility, that includes going on nature-bound trips, that includes a full-service bike shop, and even just rentals. So if you're going camping on your own, you can actually rent out camping gear, which is pretty cool. Next slide. Club sports, we promote this program as for the students, by the students. And so, um, you know, the club sports is 
is cool in the fact that if you have enough people together that are passionate and excited about a sport, well, you can you can start your own club sport. And um, they do travel to other universities and institutions and compete. They might have uniforms, they might have practices and a coach. So it, it can be pretty competitive. And what's also interesting is it really runs the gamut of um, the type of programs. Everything from paintball to equestrian to cheer and, and just lots of different options to get involved. And intramural sports. So intramural sports, as opposed to club sports, is within KSU. So it's KSU specific. And so one of the reasons why we may not have as many different op options as club sports is that we need to make sure we have enough people on the KSU campus to compete against each other. But we do have different um, phases of the program, and all that information is on our website as well. Special events. So I touched on a couple of the ones for rec programs, but as a department, we put on quite a few each each year. And the ones that I definitely want to highlight are the department ones, the Turkey Trot 5K in the fall, and the Daffodil Dash in the spring, which is going to be April 19th. So I'll go ahead and do that. A couple pictures there, different events. <laughs> so student employment. Um, we. Pretty much everything that I've talked about is run by students. We have great, great dedicated students, a wonderful team. We're always hiring. And again, if, if any of these positions look interesting or if anything I mentioned sounds interesting, I'm going to leave my card. So feel free to shoot me an email, and I will direct you to the appropriate person. Or if you know of anybody who's looking for a job, I will, I will help direct them as well. And this is just a little bit about how to apply. Um, we do have Handshake, but sometimes it can be a little simpler, faster process just to email the person directly. So that's my, that's my spiel. I tried to stay on top of your time. What I'm going to leave behind, I have copies of my business card. And I also have um, what we call our rec programs um, patrons list. And so on a monthly basis, I'll compile all the things that are going on in rec programs for the areas that I directly oversee, um, put in an email, and send it out. So it's, I'm not talking about, you know, multiple times a week. I'm going to be bombarding your inbox. It's once a month. If you're interested, you can sign up. I'll leave this here. And so different choices that you can select. There's little check boxes. If you just want to get the monthly newsletter, if you're interested in employment, the prep programs for either or, um, you can sign up for as much or as little as you want if you're interested in signing up at all. So I'll go ahead and pass this around. There you go. And you're very welcome. Is there, are there any questions? Yeah, that was going to be my next yeah. thing. Um, so I actually have a recommendation for you as a student that uses yes. the facilities a lot. Oh, okay. um, I had a couple of my constituents come to me uh, and ask. So in order to get into the rec center, you have to have your student ID. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, that creates a problem because our student IDs are in the car or like we left our wallet in the car and keys mm -hmm. to go work out, just brought our water bottle. Right. So my question to you is, is there a way for um, the rec center to provide, like, com like collaborate with like tech or something, like the technology? Mm -hmm. And if there's a way for them to provide an opportunity for us to either provide our student ID or our name, mm -hmm. and so the system, how I see it is that we provide our name, a system would pull up our picture, mm -hmm. and that would be how we verify. I think yeah. that that would serve the constituencies better, if yeah. I'm being candid, because um, yeah. I've heard a lot of complaints, and I've even been frustrated myself a few times. Okay. And I feel like that would be a little bit more beneficial of the student's time. Yeah, um, and I know a little bit about that. That's mm -hmm. not something I, I work with every day. <clears throat> but I can say we use a facility management software called Fusion, mm -hmm. and Fusion pulls in feed from Banner. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things they have talked about actually pulling in um, student ID pictures. Awesome. And I think it was a coding it was a coding barrier, mm -hmm. um, the last that I heard about it. But I will follow up with some folks and figure out where we are in that process. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. Just feel free to shoot me an email sure. if you need anything. Are there any further questions? Yeah, Director Delaney. Hi. Um, so I know that you mentioned about all of the like professional development and the classes and trainings. Yeah. So I'm a nursing major, and something I'm interested in is sports medicine. Um, mm. I didn't know if you had like anything like that, or know anyone that I could. Mm -hmm. get into. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, 
I think a lot of what we do are translatable skills to a variety of careers. And so if you're interested in sports nursing, I could say we could talk a little bit. I'd want to connect you with mm -hmm. our senior coordinator of fitness, Aaron High, because uh -huh. he's um, very, very knowledgeable as well uh -huh. and has a lot of good insight. And there are some certifications that are geared. They lend themselves a little bit better to certain industries. Okay. For example, um, there's a number of um, NCCA accredited personal training certifications, right. but some are a little bit better geared if you're interested in sports and conditioning or research or academics. And I have a feeling you'd be better suited for ACSM type of, of certification. So to answer your question, yes, I think they'd be very relevant, very good translatable skills, and we'd want to kind of get a better sense of your career goals and figure out which one may be best suited for you. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Looks like we've got time for maybe one more question. Yeah. Senator Duclair. And then I'll drop your information in the group. Sure. Hi. Hi. So um, I wanted to ask, a lot of students have talked to me about wanting to like most of the time when they go to the gym, they bring a friend with them that might necessarily go here mm. or, you know, maybe just come from another school or whatever yeah. the reason might be. Right. Is there a way that maybe with a student ID or like with a, a like KC student with them that people can get discounts? Because I'm not sure how much it is now, but I know that people are like really afraid of that price, whatever it is, because mm. they avoid it at all costs. Oh, dear. Um, I'm trying to think. If I recall correctly, I believe our guest fee is $10. Um, and that $10 guest pass does include access to group fitness classes, the climbing gym, kind of the whole shebang. Um, and that is for our Kennesaw campus facility. I believe for the Merida campus facility, it's $5. Um, yeah, I mean, we can, I know some talks have been had about maybe a multi-day pass where let's say someone's in town for a while and they know they want to use a gym for a three-day period, perhaps it's a little discounted rate. So again, like the other question, I can kind of follow up and see if those conversations have gone anywhere. Um, that's not the area I directly oversee, but it's a really good point and I, and I get it. It'd be nice to be able to work out um, with, your, with your friends and your colleagues. So I can look into where that is, if that would help. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And yes, I appreciate everything pleasure. you guys do for the students. I enjoy yoga, Pilates, Yay. spin. All, I'm all up in it. Yay. So <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um, and we have your email, and I'll be sure to drop that Perfect. in the group me. Perfect. So, I appreciate you. it. Thank you all so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And now I would like to introduce our next speaker. Um, and Mr. Overton, who is the director of athletics, is so sad that he could not be here, but he sent next best, um, his <laughs> assistant director, <laughs> Matt Griffin, um, to speak with us about the athletics department. And I know that we are partnering with you guys in the next month or so, so I'm excited to hear what you got. So, Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Matt Griffin. I'm one of the senior associate athletic directors in the athletic department. Thanks for having us this evening. Um, I'd also like to say a special thanks to SGA and all of our students here at Kennesaw State uh, for your support of all of our student athletes at all of our competitions. You guys are amazing. You make for a great atmosphere. So please continue to come to our events, support our student athletes, have a great time. Um, I think we got some uh, really good uh, student athletes, good teams. They're a lot of fun to watch. So thanks for your support and thank you for your continued support. Um, and I'd also like to mention to make sure that you tell all your friends and all of our students here at Kennesaw State that all of our athletic uh, events are free. All you have to do is show your student ID. So please come on out and support uh, those uh, young ladies and, and gentlemen. Uh, a few things that I wanted to bring your attention to that we're doing the, uh, this spring. A couple events on April 17th, our softball program is playing uh, Georgia State at home here. It is Student Appreciation Day. We have a free barbecue for anyone that attends. All you got to do, once again, is show your student ID. So come on out and support our, our Lady Owls. That uh, game time is 6 p.m. Uh, we have another event on April the 22nd. Our baseball program is also hosting Georgia State. We have a crawfish broil, free for all students. Uh, that game time is 6 p.m. And then fast forwarding to this fall, uh, getting into football season. Homecoming date is April, or I'm sorry, October the 12th. Um, we are hosting Charleston Southern. That's going to be a gold out game, so please put that on your calendar. Spread the word. October 12th, homecoming versus Charleston Southern, gold out. So everyone wear your gold. Come on out and 
support the football program, and hopefully we can make another run at the uh, Big South Championship for our third in a row. Um, another game, October 26th, we are hosting North Alabama. That's going to be our Halloween game, so, and we'll have a costume concert with that. Olivia Yurick, our director of marketing, uh, will be in contact with you guys uh, throughout the fall uh, with more information on, uh, on that game and festivities around that. So those are just a few highlights that we have coming up uh, this spring and early fall. So with that, I will open it up to any questions that you may have. Yes, sir. Senator Ray. Thank you. I was just wondering on uh, if y'all had a timeline on when we would have a new men's basketball coach and like what, how that process is going out. Yes, uh, well, the process is ongoing. Um, we are, uh, it's a very important position for us, as we all know. We are uh, doing a diligent search uh, for our next men's basketball coach. We would love to have something uh, announced around uh, uh, the first week of April, but we're going to take our time, make sure we get the right, right person for the job. Any further questions? Well, I have an announcement for you guys. Um, you will see a flyer come out uh, when we get back from spring break. But those two events in April that Mr. Griffin alluded to, we are helping to host all of the other RSO leaders at those events. So we're going to make it a big thing. Your president is throwing out the first pitch at the Georgia State game. So please come. I'm nervous. And practicing. So um, that's something that Mr. Overton was like, you're going to do it. I was like, okay. You can't tell him no. So um, you will see that flyer, and I'm excited to experience those events with you guys and get some morale going. So we will be there for all the barbecue. Awesome. Like all of it. It's going to be us. So thank you so much for being here. If there's no further questions, we will let you go. Senator Ray again, what you got this on your mind? This is a question that I just thought of that I've had for a while. So you know the field house – in left field, the or facility for the baseball, baseball field? Yes, the okay. Bailey building. Would that be possible to be to rent out for a game, to have, like, a little, like, social, like, have, like, food there, maybe a fraternity rented out, like, just for one ball game? Absolutely. Could bring money to the program. Absolutely. We actually do rent that out for uh, certain games, what we call premium games, but uh, and a lot of those are sold out. But you know, we, we have sure other email? games. My email is M G R I. F -F, F F, the number 82, 82. Got at it. Kennesaw. Appreciate yeah. it. I'll yeah, be but you, you definitely can email me, and we'll get you all the information. I'd love to have you out. Appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being yeah. here. We will see you in April. Sounds great. Awesome. Thank you all. Thanks, appreciate thanks. it. Thanks for your support. Okay, so we're going to move right along, continue the fun here. Um, not even being sarcastic with that. I'm having fun. So now we're going to go into director reports, um, and I'm going to start with, to my left, Director Williams. Greetings. <laughs> um, I just wanted to let you guys know that governance was definitely putting in a lot of work, so we'll be going over some changes to the bylaws later on in the evening, so I'll get prepared for that, and that'll be the end of my report for now. I know, it's exciting. Um, I'm gonna go then to Director Watkins. Hey, everybody. So, um, last Wednesday on March 20th was the Words of a Lover event. Thanks for everybody who helped with that um, and everyone who came out. Special shout out to my committee. They're amazing, I love them. Um, it was a huge success. We had over 60 students come out, um, so that was awesome. We got some really nice feedback from it. Um, so that's just, like, a lot of people like that event and want to do things like that in the future to help showcase the talented students of KSU. Um, as the woman from uh, Sports and Recreation talks about, Daffodil Dash is April 19th um, at 3 p.m., uh, the, the, the registration is open, so it's um, no longer going to be a canned food drive. It's now a beverage drive. So um, they're looking for things like non-refrigerated milk and bottled cases of bottled water, um, juices like Capri Suns or juice boxes and things like that to help donate. So what we're going to do as an SGA to help support that is each have um, have everyone 
donate their time or um, an item. So we'd really like for people to sign up to participate in the 5K run, but if running's not your thing, you can also volunteer at the event working um, either the registration table or uh, at one of the water stations. Um, something we're trying to do is get different RSOs to compete in kind of like a drive um, competition to see who can donate the most. So it would be really awesome if SGA won, but I would love it even more if y'all got the other organizations you're a part of to help contribute to that. Um, da, 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 da. I will be putting a box in the SGA office soon so that y'all can start bringing things in and also drop a flyer in the um, business chat so that y'all can start promoting it. Uh, da, 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 da. So the um, individual from the Department of Athletics also stole my, they, they did my director's report for me, honestly. Um, so the R RSL leadership gatherings that Carly talked about happening in April. So the games are once again, April 17th for softball, which is the free barbecue for all students. April 18th is lacrosse. Um, there's not necessarily a food thing for that one yet, but right now it's 50 water canteens to the first 50 fans. Um, and then April 22nd is the baseball game, which will be free crawfish. Um, since we're also talking about things in April, April 26th is home track meet. So, you know, come support all the all this athletics. And then lastly, on um, April 24th at 3 p.m., there will be the annual owl memorial ceremony. And um, it's a ceremony that recognizes fallen owls. I think it would be really awesome if we had individuals from SGA come just to show us respect and show support in the report. Thank you. I would also like to allude that um, the 5K Fiesta that we are participating in on April 19th is mandatory. So if you cannot be there physically, we mandate that you provide a, um, like, donate a beverage, um, like the milk. You can find that at Kroger, like the non-refrigerated milk, um, or uh, water bottles. So I know the executive board's going to come together and also donate, but we also ask that the Senate donate as well if you are not able to physically be there. So start marking your calendars, ask off work, April 19th is mandatory. Let us state the record. Okay, now we're going to move to Director Delaney. Hey guys, so as um, Director Burleson Williams alluded, there's a lot going on, so I'll be brief. Um, there's a UPCC meeting tomorrow on the Marietta campus from 1230 to 2. Um, please come out to J109. So if you want to come, I'll be there. Um, Fuel for finals is April 25th on the Kennesaw campus. It'll be from 330 to 530 out on the green. And we're going to have a lot of fun things going on. We're talking with the police to see if they can grill out with us. So. Um, It'll be a lot of fun. I know it's when the new administration, but trust me, you'll want to be there. And then on Marietta, it'll be the same day from 7 to 9, and we'll have a lot of fun games going on there. Um, so April 25th. And then lastly, if you're here for elections for the audience, um, come see me after the meeting to check in. Um, if you're in the Senate currently, I got you. So you're covered. End of report. Hey guys, so just a few things. Um, so one thing that I've been talking about since like August is how I have a passion for reaching out to underprivileged students who are coming to college for the first time who may not have you know, parents or um, relatives who went to college or maybe anybody, they don't know anything about the process pretty much. So something I did um, was I reached out to financial aid and asked them if we could do a program in June because usually high school students, they graduate late May. Um, if anybody is confused, they can come out to um, a, a, an event hosted by SGA um, and financial aid, and they can come out and literally just ask any questions they have. How do I do a FAFSA? How do I um, apply for a loan? How do I do this, that, and the other? Because those are all important questions, and if they're waiting until August 1st to do those things, I don't know. So very important. The only thing is that we are hosting it technically. Well, we are hosting it. I don't even say technically. This is all us. So this is like these are incoming freshmen. We're the first people we're gonna they're gonna really be seeing, which is a good thing for us because it shows that you know we are for the students, no matter where you come from. 
And so I need a few people to come out. It'll be in June. So I don't know everybody's schedule, but I, I'm assuming a few of us are taking summer classes. Um, I didn't make a date yet because I wanted to reach out to you guys first and see what your availability is. I only need like two or three people. I would love more, but I'm, I understand it's summer. So um, yeah, that's the big thing. Um, I did have my marketing meeting with the student, advise the student activities board. And there are a lot of really, really cool things in the making I can't speak on right now um, that are work we're working with for um, this position, even if I don't have it next year. The person who'll be taking over has a lot of really cool things they're going to be doing. And then homecoming committee. If you were interested, please re reach out to me. The guy who was over it, um, he's no longer with, like, he's, he didn't die, but he's not here. Like at this, <laughs> um, he's no longer at KSU. So, um, <laughs> so just reach out to me, we'll figure it out. Um, very important committee, very, I know it's gonna be more involved. I know President Witten's getting really involved with it. We need a hype of homecoming next year. So, end of report, thank you. Hey everybody. So, one big announcement is for officer reports this month, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. So for the month of April, what you will turn in is your end of year report. Whereas previously with officer reports, you were discussing everything you've done for the past month. In April, you're gonna be turning in a report that details everything you've done in SGA for your entire term this whole year. Um, if you have your previous officer report, you can just take information, kind of compile it into one, so it shouldn't be too big of a thing. But because of that, we know that's kind of a big undertaking and everyone's got a lot of stuff going on right now. That is gonna take the place of your March report. So we are not gonna have an individual report due this coming weekend for March. You're just gonna turn in your end of report for April. Include everything you did for March on that report, but you do not have to turn in a separate report for March. Does that make sense? Good, okay, awesome. That, uh, we're gonna turn that in on Owl Life, just like you turn in other reports, and it'll be very similar. Um, April 9th is the due date on that. And I will send out numerous reminders. So just keep an eye on the group chat for that. Um, if you have not yet signed up for a one-on-one -on -one with your Senate lead, please, please do that because there's only a couple days of the month left. So get on that. Okay, end of report. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have one more thing. Um, fuel for finals. So we have another cool program. If you need a campus engagement for April, if you attend both Fuel for Finals for Kennesaw and Marietta, you can count that as your campus engagement for the month. So highly recommend that. It's gonna be a great time on both campuses, so if you can make it out, you attend both, then you got your engagement for the month. Okay, now into report. Oh wait, Emma, yes, hi. Uh, so for the, okay, thank you. For the, for the whole April, end of year report that's yes. due on April 9th yes okay so just kind of early okay yes okay I just want to make sure yeah because we our term as a group will end prior to the end of April so we want to have those in while everyone's still here okay. awesome thank you treasurer Har. hey guys I'm going to try to keep it really brief for right now uh, stipends committee had our second meeting in the semester today. It went really well, very productive. I think everybody learned a lot about Excel. You're welcome. <laughs> but thank you to Carly. She actually really helped us out too. Um, and I appreciate her and everybody else that's on the committee. Um, our last meeting is gonna be April 15th. Uh, we should have finalized stipend awards uh, to, that will be emailed to all the executive board members between the 15th and the 19th. Um, in terms of SABEC, the RSO annual budget request is due this Friday, March 29th at noon, um, we are receiving a lot of requests uh, and SABEC has allocated four to five days that we will spend reviewing all of those requests, um, one of which will be ours that we'll vote on later in the meeting. Um, yeah, end of report. Right, so um, looking at our um, FY19 budget just really quickly, we are allocated $2,000 for Senator Forums. We are so, so, so close. Uh, it's $1,706 that we've spent already. So there's only $300 left for the entire semester. Um, I really encourage you guys to try to get out there, find creative ways to use that money. 
um, not just donuts or scantrons, but you know, think outside the box, and I think we can make a good impact with that money. Thank you. End of report. I would like to see you guys spend that $300, the Senate. Okay, Vice President Salam. Well, Vice President Salam, uh, I'd like to congratulate all the new officers who are elected, and uh, please reach out to your uh, current officers to know what you have to do. You'll be having a, what do you call it, a packet which actually will help you understand what your duties are, but the resource that you have with the current officer will be much more useful to you than that actual packet. So make sure that you keep const in constant touch with them till the end of uh, their term to kind of understand how you have to work through this and what all you have to keep in mind through your whole term. And <clears throat> we have the National Con Conference for Undergraduate Research coming up, and it will be right after the spring break. It is a big, big event. And it is, I guess, this is the first time uh, it is in Georgia, and KSU has the opportunity of hosting it. And there will be students from all over the United States, and we need to make a good impression of the university over there. One really important thing is they, need, they are in need of volunteers. Make sure that uh, if you have free time, go sign up. There will be people who are from SGA who will be presenting over there. Cheer them up, and I'm one of them. Yeah. And uh, other than that, yes. And for the KSU Day of Service, that was a great day. Treasurer Har and I, we went to the Kennesaw National Battlefield, Mountain Battlefield Park. We cleaned up the roads. It was good. I mean, it was pretty good. Even though, like, in the morning it was so cold and I wasn't really prepared. I didn't actually wore, like, a sandal kind of thing. It was really bad on my legs, but it was good. And uh, spring break is coming up. Happy spring break. Enjoy carefully. Play but don't break your leg. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Um, hi, everyone. So I've had a fun couple of weeks. I'm going to run through like I usually do and tell you what has been on my schedule since I saw you last. Um, one of them was probably one of my favorite meetings I had with the director of athletics athletics, Milton Overton. I encourage each of you to talk to him, meet with him. He is probably one of the coolest people that work here. Um, he's really enthusiastic about students and that's how the conversation came about on um, how SGA can help further student involvement. So I will charge those members who are coming back, especially my you know, future vice president who is an athlete, to continue that relationship with the athletic department. Um, and because they will be asking that of you. So you, like I said, you guys will catch a flyer. Um, you will see the flyer come out after spring break for those events. Again, throwing out the first pitch at the, um, bat, the baseball game. So please come. I'm scared. Then um, I met with Miss Craven um, to recap our workshop. And she was just so floored, just excited, and very thankful for y'all's participation in that event. That is something that I will encourage the next administration to do again, because um, I think it really bonded us as a team. Then I had a shared governance meeting um, with the other governing bodies of the university, and this is when I would like for you guys to kind of give me a panel as to who knows what shared governance is. Just raise your hand. And what event, <laughs> Ron, what events um, and who is a part of it? So just give me a glance of who knows what shared governance is. One person in the Senate. Okay. Um, I'm going to deviate real quick and talk about it. Sorry. So shared governance are, we are part of shared governance of the university, which we partner with the staff Senate and the faculty Senate to um, facilitate conversations based on our constituents. So this meeting is, was about how shared governance, how we should articulate our relationship. And if any of you want to be a part of that conversation, there's another shared governance meeting on the 8th. It is at 8 a.m. on the Monday we come back from spring break. So if you want to go with me, um, I would love it. I'll take questions at the end. Or you can come up to me later. But I would encourage you guys to get a part of what that conversation looks like. Um, since I'm graduating in May, I'm doing my best to facilitate them so you guys are set up well. Um, but if you want to hear more about shared governance, please come see me after the meeting. 
in continuation with my report, um, I went to the Night of Healing recap um, on the 19th, which is when we talked about with the cultural department what we learned from that event. I actually have notes, like from the note cards the students wrote. If you guys want to look at that, let me know. I can provide that for you. I know, thank you to Tariq who went to the event last night. I'm looking forward to hearing about that in open forum. Also, I'm part of the Chief Diversity Officer Search Committee, which um, is a huge task and it is something that I am honored to serve on because it is more than relevant now on this campus than I feel than ever. We plan to have a new Chief Diversity Officer the first week of May. So in May, you will have a new CDO. Um, that's all I can say on that. Then I had lunch with President Witten on the 20th and that's with where other students um, from around the campus came and it was such an honor to get to speak with them and talk with them and we shared a lot of really good ideas with President Witten and I just fell in love with her even more. She's awesome, we're so blessed to have her. If you wanna learn more about those conversations, come and see me. Then I was a part of the football ticket meeting, which is, and Tariq was there with me too. Um, so the objective of that committee is to basically spitball ideas and come up with ways of how we can get more student engage, engagement in the fall. Um, and not only just for football, but also for other um, sports as well. Then this last weekend was the best weekend ever. I attended um, the mandatory SAC conference. That is why I was not with you on KSU service day. Um, that is something I was devastated about because I was looking forward to it, spending that time with you. But this conference is sponsored by the University System of Georgia and it was when all the SGA presidents from around um, different universities come together and we talk about ideas, which is the best way for leaders to collaborate and talk about things that their senates have overcome. They were all very proud of us, um, <laughs> very proud of us. And also to come up with diff different ideas. I know this was one that was incredibly important to me. I talked a lot about the budget and I also asked, got a lot of feedback about our constitution and bylaws because many of those universities have seen our constitution and bylaws. Um, and so they were able to give me a lot of ideas that I then gave to the um, Director Williams and the ad hoc committee. So if you want to learn more about that agenda, or want me to send it to you, whatever, I can talk about it with you individually. Um, I also had the privilege of meeting with the assistant vice president of um, construction, if not mistaken. So he does all of the development on campus, um, Mr. Gebecki, I think I butchered that, but it was awesome. I forwarded some information to Vincent on the plans and the allocations that the university has had for both the Kennesaw campus and the Marietta campus. So if you're interested in seeing how they've allocated their budget as far as development goes, check with Mr. Coakley. I'm still going, guys. It's been a busy couple of weeks. Sorry, <laughs> a couple more points. So one that I'm probably most excited about, I met with, um, she's the director of planning and development for the president, or like uh, event planning. So she plans like commencement. She plans all the really cool stuff that the president tasks her with. So specifically talking about commencement, I think I'm one of the only graduating seniors in May in here, if I'm not mistaken. Raise your hand. Yep. Hey, so... Um, there will be a flyer published that I would like this organization to get out to their constituents to encourage students to claim their graduation tickets. Um, because I'm working on an initiative with her for December that if this push goes well, they'll do it again and potentially close the gap of when the extra tickets open in December to give more students time to get those extra tickets. So this is a big deal for graduating seniors. If you aren't a senior, you don't get it. Trust me, you want that gap to close. So you can get that for your extra family members. Then I met with the provost on the 25th and that was something I was so honored to do, walk in her new office because she was my previous dean. And a few things that I asked her, like what were her big initiatives going in, because I know that's something we wanted her to come and speak, but her schedule's so tight, she doesn't have time. So I'll give you three points that she gave me, because I know I'm talking a lot. Um, the first point was that she is a part of the curriculum review. If you would like to work with that committee on the curriculum review, please come talk to me. I'm reaching out to the director of that curriculum review to see how we can get more vocal students um, on those review committees, because that is something that President Witten asked me to look into. So if you want to be a part of that conversation, you're passionate about what we got going on, especially for all, this is the general education curriculum review, university-wide, let me know. Um, she also talked about uh, ad, um, 
advising as well. That is something that her office is aware of. So just to encourage you that she and the president are aligned and working very well together. That was really encouraging for me to hear. And she is super excited to serve you. Then <laughs> I met with the chief legal officer, Wakago, um, and she is actually going to be presenting to us on April 10th. So come with questions for her. This is a good opportunity to opportunity to ask her how the legal system serves you as a student, because they work tireless, tirelessly um, to represent you well. I know um, we all learned some things from the previous cultural dissonance um, from that. This morning, I met with Chief Stevens and Deputy Chief Vaughn, which was probably my favorite part of my day besides being with you guys now, because they are planning to maybe possibly come out and grill some hamburgers and hot dogs with us for Fuel for Finals. Um, they're so excited to be a part of it, and um, we are going to work with them in the future, so to, to the future administration, continue their relationship with the police department in a positive light, because they're excited to be here with you guys. Then um, I had the, I'm not sure if you guys were aware of the SAC, the SAC COC that occurred today on campus. I think that they are still here. Um, so this is every 10 years, each university is audited by other university officials. I was blessed to have lunch with them, um, a few of them today, where we had some really candid conversation about what's working at a university and what isn't. Um, and it was a little bit intimidating because it was like every 10 years, this is our image. Um, but I feel that we were represented well in that meeting. And we had stipends committee meeting today, which we'll talk about later, executive board. And the next thing I already mentioned is the shared governance um, meeting. If you would like to attend that, please, please come with me. I think this is an amazing learning opportunity for you all of how this university works. <sighs> End of report. <laughs> that was fun. So um, now we're going to move into open forum, and this is when I get to hear from you guys. So you've heard me get up here and talk a lot, out of breath, so please, Senator Benitez, take it off and tell me what you guys have been up to. Hey, y'all. I have been a little busy recently with meeting with some of my constituents, um, but one thing I really do want to bring to the table is that Kennesaw State was reached out to by an actual a national organization called NASPA. It's the National Association of, Association of Student Personnel Administrators asking us to fill out the application to apply for their first forward initiative. And so what that is, is it really works um, with our first gen population on campus. And I'm going to read it word for word from the application, but if we do get accepted into this, into this um, program, and we'll know within next week, so I'll let y'all know, um, we will be one of the nation's, nation's first recognition programming programs acknowledging higher education institutions for their commitment to first generation student success. So that is a really big deal. This isn't like regional, this is national. So I'm really excited about that and really excited to let y'all know if we get that, when we get that. Um, but yeah, that, I had that meeting today and then also, I know y'all saw in the group me, but I met with my dean and I brought up to her the coach bus for the university wide. Um, but she loved the idea and conversations are happening. So if you see a big old Kennesaw charter bus, don't be surprised. End of report. Awesome. What else for open forum? Senator Bradford. Uh, Senator Bradford. Hey, how you guys doing? So um, over the course of these last two weeks, uh, as Carly touched on, we had the student engagement meeting, um, me, her, and Senator, well, Director Watkins, my bad. Um, a bunch of great ideas. We're trying to build more of a campus culture around Kennesaw. There's nothing set in stone yet, but I know a lot of people typically say there's not a place to go after football games, and we are working on that. We're trying to... Okay. That, we're working on it. Yeah. I don't know if I can say more. Can I? No. no? Yeah, yeah, I can't say more, but we're working on it. Um, also, uh, I did attend the Unity Recap yesterday. This event, sadly, didn't have the turnout as the other one, but it was a lot more engaging. They actually was reaching out to students to see what type of diversity training they would like to see like other students and faculty have, and also how to get different communities to come together as one. And they're really trying to plan a, a type of Kennesaw State campaign to build a culture on campus. And I think that's something that we've been needing for a very long time. So I'll keep you updated on that. Beautiful. Yeah. Anything further for Open Forum? Oh, I know you guys have been busy. Hi, Senator Ellington. Hey guys, uh, quick update. 
They still don't have a direct timeline for the library renovation on the Marietta campus, but you know that is still in happening. And then the parking lot that is being like like bended together over there in Marietta campus begins hopefully over spring break. So you may see that popping up and a lot of more construction. So not that great, but you know in the long run it's going to turn out. April twenty second, Director White wanted to be, wanted me to remind you guys is for the permit. So Go ahead and get those while they're hot. And um, anything else? Oh yeah, Vincent is in Detroit probably already for the uh, National Society of Black Engineers Convention. I fly out in the morning. Um, I'm re presenting research on Friday for that. So hopefully when I get back, we'll have more word on how that went and everything. So yeah, that's about it. Awesome. I encourage you to network at that event and see if there are other senators from other SGAs at that event. I would assume so, and get some ideas and bring it back to us. Beautiful. What else for open forum? Hi. <laughs> I'm surprised. Please. <laughs> Senator Omis, Senator for Michael Z. Cole's College of Business. So last week on Wednesday, March 20, I had a meeting with the interim dean for Coles College of Business, Dr. Robin. So in the meeting, we discussed about how to increase the graduation rate for undergrad students. And she also mentioned that uh, she is working hardly on the placement things. So she wants to get more job placement after the graduation. and. Uh, Another thing she mentioned was that uh, she wants to get more involvement of the students in the summer classes. So she was looking for any recommendations. So I steal the word from Treasurer Hart that uh, we need to reduce the tuition fee. So she was slightly OK with that. But, but still, she said she need to work with the president. And other thing I talked about that was Every other universities, they provide undergraduate degree for 120, 120 career hours, but Kinesa, they provide uh, for 123. So I was uh, talking with her about from where the three credits came from. So for the three credit, personally, talking about me, uh, for the three credit, I have to go to the 21 for the graduation. I was supposed to graduate in the late 2020, but because of the three credit hours, uh, I need to graduate on 2021. So she also talked about uh, the possible solution about that, and she is willing to work on that too. That's all. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Director Delaney, um, so kind of in regards to that, that's something that's being talked about in UPCC. Um, that's kind of the big thing that's going on is a lot of these, basically we're trying to figure out what to do with those three credits because we don't want to like eliminate courses. But So if you're interested, please come out tomorrow. It'll not be another topic again. Um, I'm actually going to be sending out a survey to you guys tonight. It'll be real quick, but I just want to gather some stuff so tomorrow we can kind of I can say this is what SGA thinks about it. Um, but yeah, so we are kind of discussing that issue in UPCC. So if you're interested, come on out. So Omi, you're going to go to that meeting, right? <laughs> yes, awesome. uh, I would love that. Thank awesome. you. So if there's nothing further for open forum, I'm giving you the six second wait. OK, we're going to move into new business. And you guys buckle your seats, because we got a lot to present. Um, this is when I need you to be engaged. I know it's 8 PM. My brain has been here for 10 hours. So just stay with us. We, this is some important stuff. Treasurer Har is going to come up now, and he's going to present the budget for the year, fiscal year 2020. So if you're staying with the Senate, this affects you directly. Um, so I encourage you to pay close attention. Um, so point of information, um, after he's finished presenting, um, there will be a, there will need to be a motion on the floor to approve the budget. Um, just point of information. I will ask for that. So Treasurer Har, if you want to take the floor and get talking. Thank you. 
Hey guys, I'll try to make this as, um, as least possibly mind-numbing uh, for you all. So just to give you guys a quick overview, uh, FY20 annual budget requests are due Friday. This consists of three things. One, which is what you're looking at, the actual FY20 uh, budget request spreadsheet. The second part is the FY19 budget expense report. So I've compiled all of our expenses, all of your wonderful events for the entire fiscal year. Um, with, along with attendance, um, the items you used with our funding, um, and kind of gathered some insight as to how many students we reach. Um, the spreadsheet, uh, this budget spreadsheet is the part that must pass to you, you all. Uh, I'm gonna email all parts of it to you guys, uh, probably tonight. Um, and that just has all of the expenses on it. So it consists of <laughs> Sorry, the, um, the template they gave us was a locked template, so it's what all RSOs are going to be using for the uh, FY20 annual budget request. It consists of three parts, travel, programs, and promotion. Um, essentially, there's these limits here that, that were listed um, in addition to your normal say back and state um, protocols. So something else I need y'all's input on is in each so there's technically six tabs, two for each part. Um, one goes into the actual events um, for each one, and then the expense tab to the right of that is like the itemized cost. So for the tabs to the left that say travel back, background, programs uh, background, and promotion background, they asked us to rank in priority order um, what line items we wanted where. So if you wouldn't mind clicking to two. So this should be an easy one. Um, yeah. I don't know why they're not both on. But um, is there any way you could scroll up? Sorry, the other way. Yep. OK, awesome. So um, if you can kind of make out to the far left column, it says priority level. Uh, I think I have. Four events listed here, one being our SGA development activity. Uh, that's the annual uh, thing we do together to kind of train our new people, discuss job responsibilities, expectations, time commitments, and our semester -yearly and yearly goals. Um, I put that at $1,805, and I put that as our first priority. Our second um, item on the travel event is the SAC conference. So what that is, is one registration fee of $700, uh, and that pays for three different trips for the SJ president. That is actually, U they're USG mandated events that she must attend to provide feedback on the state of the university to somebody in Georgia state uh, government. The third one is called L Cubed Summit. Uh, this is happening at UNG later on this year. Um, President Keller actually will be talking about that later on. We're trying to look for two um, young faces, emerging student leaders from colleges, universities across the state of Georgia. Um, that is $700 for both people. And then the last one is just something we've historically done. It technically is over the limit and may not be approved. It is also our lowest priority, but it is the NCSL, National Conference for Student Leadership. It's very popular with student governments and um, programming boards. So like CAB and MAC would also attend um, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So does anyone have any issues with how this is prioritized right now? Because we need to quickly yeah. get each one of the three tabs organized and then vote. So I'm gonna give you guys a recap of what Steven said. So how he has this prioritized, and this is where we need your feedback. One, we have development, which is your development. Um, two, we have the SAC conference. One thing I forgot to mention about the SAC conference, we actually come together as presidents of our universities or our student governments and recommend, make recommendations to the chancellor to the University System of Georgia. So we all combine the issues that we are facing as a whole to make a recommendation to the USG on your behalf. Third, we have the um, L-Cubed Summit, which is another developmental opportunity for you all. And then the last conference um, is the NCSL, which is just another leadership conference. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see, this is not like a formal vote, 
I just want to see all in favor of how it is currently prioritized. Will you just show me, show me your hands? Okay, that's majority. Yep. Right. Okay, um, so quickly we'll look at the expenses. Um, just very briefly, I just want your eyes to see all of it, uh, but I don't want to waste your time. So uh, for the development activity, I used our uh, event in August of 2018 as kind of my guide to help me um, format this request. Uh, the food that's included is at $9 a person, which is per diem, um, so that all should be fine. And then there's just costs associated with the event. And then um, the notes just say that it was estimated based off of our previous event. L Cube Summit, it's two student registrations at $3.95 a piece. Those uh, fees include meals, lodging, t-shirt, conference registration, and uh, materials. Um, for SAC, the $700 that we are paying uh, is divided up amongst three different USG mandated events. So there is a $500 travel limit per each occurrence, but since there's three occurrences, uh, we're fine in regards to that. Um, and then the last item, which is NCLS, I believe. Um, it has student registration, hotel, and flight, and I believe that comes out to, I can't see it, but it's 900 and something dollars. Like I said, that's our lowest priority, and I was just advised uh, it's something we've historically done, and if it doesn't suit the needs of the organization, then we've prior prioritized it the lowest. So we'll move on to programs real quick. Is there any discussion on what we have just talked about? What? what? Can't get them Delta. Oh, oh. yes. <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to do a formal vote to approve this section. I need a motion on the floor to approve. The travel section, what we just went over. So we're going to approve the section individually. No, we're not. Ron is telling me. Just kidding. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I just need everybody's. This is probably the most important thing to you all. Obviously, um, this was in no particular order. I'm open to changing it, obviously. But the way I um, inputted our programming and event information is fuel for finals was our first top priority. Uh, fuel for midterms, uh, we've overall decreased both of those yearly budgets by $100 um, in an effort to just make better use of those funds elsewhere. Uh, senator forums, like I said earlier, we were allocated $2,000 for this year. Um, we're getting to the end of the semester and we're at $1,700 spent. I feel like it fits the needs of the organization. Um, and obviously, it, I have descriptions here. Uh, internal events was the fourth priority that I had put. Um, that budget stayed the same as well, $500 um, for multiple events such as Meet the President's resume building and professional workshops, as well as our homecoming events. And then the fifth um, priority is something that I kind of just need to explain because obviously it's not a program. Uh, you see it correctly, it says stipends. So travel, programming, and promotion were the only three categories that they gave us to put all of our expenses in. So we needed to make things fit wherever we could. Uh, stipends were neither mentioned uh, for or against in the FY20 guidelines. So essentially what I said here, uh, and I just want to make sure that you all know this, due to FY20 guidelines not including verbiage in regards to stipends, SGA has uh, defaulted to the most recent information provided from SAVAC, which were FY19 funding limits, and SGA stipends are handled by our stipends committee, who is approved, um, hopefully, approved by a majority vote from the Senate under uh, new bylaw revisions that may get passed today. So obviously if it doesn't get passed, we'll change that wording. Um, but we just want to make sure that they understand that we aren't just giving this money out. Uh, there is a process um, just to continue on. Um, according to SGA's bylaws, attendance, participation, documentation, job performance are all areas of work recorded and taken into account for the total stipend recommendation. Um, so with these five categories, are we okay with um, how they are arranged? Dreek. 
Um, I was just saying um, when it says internal affairs events, because it says 500 this semester, 500 that semester, but the total is still 500. So I just was wondering if that was a typo. So what that says actually is number of participants, gotcha. number of student gotcha. participants. So something that was actually pretty cool while I was compiling all the data from your event request throughout the, uh, the fiscal year, I found out that SGA reaches over a thousand students literally in like tap cards um, a year. And I think that's great outreach. Uh, obviously it could be better, but with what the forces we've got, I think that's pretty good. Um, and then it, those, like I said, those numbers are just participant numbers. Um, if anything were to be cut from this, uh, I assume that they will start from the lowest priority. That is why I put stipends there. Um, it's not essential for the continuance of SGA. So um, does anyone have any grievances or issues with how it is currently arranged? Sweet, thank you. Um, program expenses, I just itemized it into snacks and then a school survival kit, 300 and 200, uh, and that's for fuel for finals, uh, fall and spring. Um, and it totals up to $500 for the fiscal year. Fuel for midterms, the same two categories, except the budgets are reduced slightly, $250 and $150 with a grand total of four. Um, and then for senator forums, what we did was we broke it up into you know food or snacks in one category, event supplies like napkins, plates, things that are essentially universal to you guys. And then the third category is for personal project supplies. Uh, you, can't, you can see the S, but you can't see the rest of it. But I know that our constituencies vary, our needs differ, and we wanted to make sure that our budget kind of reflected that. Um, and obviously that is uh, a, one of the largest portions of our budget, uh, that $2,000 right there. Internal events, uh, we used food and event supplies as our two categories, totaling up to $500. And stipends, we organized it into fall stipends and spring stipends at $5,000 a piece. Um, if there's no further questions on the programming part of the budget, we'll just move on to promotions. Awesome. So like I said, you might see some things right off the bat that you're like, I don't know if that's a promotion. So these are things that historically SGA uses. Um, it helps us reach out to constituents. Um, Obviously, some given promotional items are SGA promotional t-shirts uh, budgeted at $2,000. Um, and then SGA promotional items like you guys may have seen on our Instagram. We got that big shipment of wonderful promotion items, uh, something along those lines or something different next year at another $2,000 chunk. And then we kind of get into um, Yearly printing, uh, this may include but is not limited to business cards, meeting agendas, publicity flyers, and printing supplies such as ink. We budgeted that at $300. Um, and then something that our constitution and bylaws require for uh, elections actually is to place ads in student media. Obviously nothing is free. <laughs> so uh, we budgeted for the fourth page of CMYK Color Inc. Um, to advertise elections when it comes time. And then we also put name tags, and you're like, name tags? Name tags allow members of SGA to be represented and be present. Uh, it kind of sets you apart from just a normal crowd and lets your constituents know that, oh, I can talk to this person, uh, and they're here for me. So I felt that that was something that helps us promote SGA. Uh, and then office supplies, such as scantrons, pens, pencils, highlighters, sticky notes, staples, hole punch, um, if you guys haven't seen, Secretary Tor created a wonderful Excel document uh, that took all of your requests into account, and we actually included that on the FY19 um, expense report. So there's just a tab for, for office supplies, and I know we're one of the only RSOs that actually has an office, so that's why um, it may not have been uh, obvious that office supplies was, was really important to us, but it doesn't fit really in any of these categories. Um, but this is where we've decided to put it. Does anyone have any issues with how this is organized? Cool. So we'll go to totals real quick. 
Um, I don't want to take too much more of your time. So I don't know if you guys remember, but for FY19, we were allocated $23,060. Our grand total for this budget, FY19, or FY20, I apologize, the grand total is $22,000. $22,891, um, so sl marginally below. Um, but I, I truly think that our budget fits the needs of the organization right now. Um, you guys do a good job with that money, and we're fiscally responsible. So as long as those three boxes are checked on my list, I'd say that um, we're operating successfully in terms of budgeting. So can... Um, so two things. One, our neighbors are about to get a little bit loud. So I need your attention here. I know it's like 8.15 and we're like, mm. so I just, I need it here. All right, right here, guys. Um, because after this vote, we're going to talk about your bylaws. So we've got a lot of change coming. So just stick with me. It's going to be fun. Second of all, I would like to give Treasurer Har a round of applause for his amazing work. <laughs> Um, this is not easy to compile, nor, did, nor is it easy to explain, and I have been so thankful that he has broken it down in a way that even I can understand, someone who isn't a fan of math, um, even though my mom's a math teacher, but thank you so much for your hard work this entire semester and previous semester. Thank you for all that you do. Um, now, I would like, I need a motion on the floor to approve the budget in total. Senator McGinnis. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second? I, okay. <laughs> I second. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Wow. All opposed? Any abstentions? This motion just passed, ladies and gentlemen. You have a budget for fiscal year 20. Thank you, Treasurer Har. Just on that note, like I said, um, the three things that we need to submit on Friday, or that I will be submitting, I suppose I should say, um, are this spreadsheet, which is our FY20 request, the FY19 report, which will be emailed out to you. It has a lot of great information. You can kind of see the year in total and see uh, our outreach and numbers. And then Our Owl Life has a couple more questions with supporting documents. So if you ever got a quote or you have receipts that you never turned in, please get those to me as soon as possible because I have to submit all of that on Friday at noon, no later. Thank you, Treasure Man, I'm gonna sleep so much better now that, now that that's passed. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue in new business. I'm gonna pass it off to Director Williams. And now I need your attention here, right here, guys. Um, we're gonna talk about the changes that the Governance Committee and also your ad hoc committee has worked tirelessly, tirelessly, um, to uh, get passed into your bylaws. My brain just went dead. So um, Director Williams, please walk us through what you guys have been working on. OK. Um, I would like to get the members of Governance Committee to take this stand with me, please. Um, yes, I want to give credit to everyone um, on Governance Committee for working so hard. <laughs> um, so from this meeting going forward, I'm sure we're going to have bylaws being passed like every single meeting, um, because there was definitely a lot to get done. Um, so tonight, we're going to go over Article Sorry, Article 5, stipends, and Article 11, budget request to stay back. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain this as perfect as I can so everyone can understand it because this is extremely important. Um, so I'll read to you guys the bylaws as they are and then what was changed and why. Um, so... Article 5.1 says the SGA stipend committee shall review stipend requests each semester and recommend a stipend award within the guidelines set by SABAC and SGA. Um, let's see. Criteria shall consist of equal parts attendance and participation, documentation and job performance. 5.1.1 says attendance and participation may include, but it is not limited to, 
general body attendance, attendance at SGA events, office hours, one-on-ones, committee and commission meeting attendance. So the green that you guys are seeing is what's added, and I'm not reading that because it's not added as of right now. Um, 5.1.2 says documentation include, but is not limited to officer reports, end of the year reports, committee, commission meeting minutes, form feedback, or other SGA forms. And I'm gonna stop right there because we have two big changes. Um, so 5.1, we added all relevant documentation um, because we don't have stipend requests. And we want to say, we want to remove May and at the S and includes. Can you guys follow along right here? I'm trying to um, explain this to you guys, but you guys see on the PowerPoint. Um, we removed Senate leads will be responsible for providing um, job performance feedback on senators and added all executive board positions will receive feedback from the Senate and executive board through a job performance evaluation survey. Um, we did this last semester and I do believe that it worked out really nicely. Um, and moving along, I'm gonna go into what we removed out of 5.2, which is stipends are calculated by the current semester's tuition per credit hour. Stipends max out at the cost of 15 credit hours. Um, so when it breaks down the stipends of executive board, it had a percentage of tuition, which is no longer current. And also we removed senators' um, stipends and replace those with the actual total of the stipends. So 5.2 will now say stipends are calculated using the recommended slash required limits set by SABAC and using attendance and participation documentation and job performance to determine the award amount. So I'm gonna stop right there and um, get a little discussion going because I don't wanna Continue going along. Okay. okay. Um, so I'll complete this first article and then get discussion going. Um, the stipend committee will be chaired and we added and appointed by the treasurer and then we added and will be confirmed by a majority vote of the Senate and consists of the treasurer, a representative from the executive board, four senators and the SGA advisor who is non-voting and we will remove stipends Stipend forms shall be distributed monthly to SGA officers at least one week prior to the last general session meeting of the semester. The stipend forms will be submitted to the stipend committee and it will begin review on each request. Instead, we say stipend committee shall use a living document, which is Google Docs, um, to monitor progress and earnings of each individual stipend. This document may be accessible upon request to any member of student government, including the student body after the first stipend meeting, stipend committee meeting of the semester. Okay. So <laughs> we added all relevant documentation in 5.1 and removed stipend requests. So because the wording is outdated from standard practice, we added 5.1.1 administrator meetings, administrative meetings, because this is already laid out in Article 6 under SGA duties and responsibilities, simply including it in information considered to calculate stipends. Um, we added 5.1.1 and 5.1.2, the S, and removed May, um, just to remove, remove ambiguity. 5.1.3.1, all executive board positions will receive feedback from the Senate and executive board through a job performance evaluation survey is what we added and we will remove Senate leads. We will be responsible because senators no longer receive stipends and should not be considered in end of year evaluations. Um, so we added 5.2 using the recommended required limit set by SABAC and using attendance and participation documentation and job performance to determine the award amount and we'll remove the current 
semester's tuition per credit hour, stipends max out at the cost of 15 credit hours, and this is because SGA and stipends committee no longer use percentages of tuition to calculate stipends. Instead, we use the recommended limits in a tracking monitoring, monitoring process of executive board members. We added um, 5.3.1. 5.3.2, 5.3.3, 5.3.4, 5.3.5, .3 and 5.3.6, the correct limits of stipends from SABAC as of fiscal year 19. And we removed all those percentages, um, including the senators no longer receiving stipends. We added 5.4 and appointed and will be confirmed by a majority vote of the Senate and V and a representative from the executive board because during fiscal year 19, there was an intense discussion about who, according to the Constitution and bylaws, was responsible for assembling the stipends committee. And we've decided that the treasurer should appoint and have a confirmation vote by the Senate as well as a mandatory representative of the executive board to maintain a balance of powers. Okay, on 5.5, we added um, the living document article and we removed that it should be, the stipends form should be distributed because the old method of stipends calculation allowed individual SGA members to submit their own payment forms to the committee, and the committee must have made a decision based upon that info only and had five days to do so. So the stipends committee immediately now um, begins monitoring executive board members' progress at the beginning of the semester and sends the proposed deduction to the officer in question at least two days prior to the last general session. And the appeals process is the same um, we just added D to clarify that one appeal to the stipends committee is made, and if the decision is still not satisfactory, then there can be another appeal made to the governance committee. The officer may also view the stipends documents at any point in a semester to see their progress. So it's a Google Doc. And that's it for Article 5. <sighs> Okay, so again, we're right here. I know this is like super crazy and boring, but this is probably the most important. This, what we're doing right now is your legacy as a Senate. Okay? So, um, is there any, actually, I need a motion to approve this Thank you. Second, Senator Bradford. Is there any discussion on the floor before we vote? Senator McGinnis. Uh, Senator McGinnis, my only discussion would be for future amendments to the bylaws, for future changes. Could you email them to us beforehand to save time so we could read them prior and come with any questions? Definitely. Thank you. That's it. Senator Ray. Do you think maybe on the stipend amounts we need to put like an asterisk and like put in parentheses subject to change due to amount received from funding? Because if we don't re receive that full amount, then that amount's going to have to change based on how much we receive from that. What does governance think about that? I think I would say 5.2 says stipends are calculated using the um, recommended limits and using attendance and participation documentation and job performance determines the award amount. Is, is that covering what you were? Yeah, but with these numbers that we're approving that puts sets awards on each position. So like that determines that amount, but if we don't get that full amount, then we cannot give them all of that. that the, um, okay, the amount is the, basically the maximum stipend that you're eligible for. And the 5.2 is basically saying 
is based on your job performance if you get the whole yeah, yeah, I get that but okay. I'm just I'm saying like like Stephen said the stipends are our lowest priority and mm -hmm. we are at ten thousand dollars but let's say we don't get that full amount or anything let's say they give us five this is all going to be cut in half but right now there's a set number so I'm just saying like a, just a little asterisk like in the top of each number and like on the bottom maybe just say subject to change depending on amount received okay Ron's not in his head yes okay we like that idea Cool. Um, so, any further discussion on the floor? Okay. So, in this vote, we're going to vote to approve Article 5 pending the addition. We can approve Baxter's recommendation, and if it gets approved, we can just add it. Okay. Because right now there's a motion on the floor to approve Article 5. Oh. So, I'm just going to say yeah. pending the rewrite. We're communicating telepathically. So, no further discussion. All in favor of approving Article 5 revisions? Okay, all opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Okay, this motion does pass. Article 5 is approved. Let's move to Article 11. Article 11, budget request to say back. Director Williams, may I make a recommendation? Yes. As you read, um, I know this is much shorter, but could we read it? Never mind, it's, just, it's short, never mind. Never I'll mind. just um, tell you, you what was added and removed. Okay. Okay. Um, so 11.2 was added, which is not there currently. The proposed budget must have input from all aforementioned executive board officers as outlined in Article 6. And um, afterwards, we removed the two because we added that 11.2. So now it's 11.3. Um, the proposed budget must be presented to and approved by a majority vote of SGA before it is presented to SABAC. Um, we removed this, and why is because we are reinforcing the requirements laid out in Article 6 to make certain that the budget is reflective of the needs of SGA and formatting. And that's all I have for Article 11. Awesome. So is there a motion on the floor to approve the changes to Article 11? Senator Bradford. Just say it. I move to approve the changes to Article 11. Awesome. Seconded by Senator Ellington. Is there any discussion on the floor? All right. Seeing there is no discussion, all in favor of approving the changes to Article 11. All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, this motion does pass. The changes to Article 11 have been made. Awesome. So do you want me to Yeah. So we're gonna, since we have 20 minutes left in the meeting, we didn't anticipate this going this fast, so we're gonna continue maybe with one more article that you guys have started making changes to that the Governance Committee has approved. And so we can go ahead and get that voted. Um, just to kind of give you a picture of what the rest of the, we have two more meetings left together. It, one on the meeting, the meeting on the 24th is where I swear in your new president. So it is our objective to get this done and approved um, before then. So the next meeting in two, this is going to be the focus of new business. So the more we can get done today, the better. Um, so I'm going to give Director Williams a minute to um, tell us where she wants to go. Thank you guys for your attention and patience. I appreciate you. And I hope you're going to take a nap on the beach on spring break. I'm going to. Yeah, Lefebvre is about it. <laughs> Delaney's going to Disney. It's exciting. Happiest place on earth, except for all the screaming children. <laughs> Who's going on vacay? What up, girl? Okay, vacay. Who's going to stay in bed and watch Netflix? Who's going to stay in bed and watch Netflix on your vacay? <laughs> yes. Okay, beautiful. I task all of you with practicing some self-care. Yeah.
Take a bubble bath. Drink some beverages if you're above 21. All right, Director Williams. I'm going to read over here. Okay, you ready for us? Yes. Okay, um, let's give her our attention. Okay, so now we're going to move on to Article 2. And again, what you guys are seeing in red is what we plan to remove. Um, and we want to change articles to, Article 2's name from meeting times to just meeting um, because it elaborated on more than just the times. So we're going to remove meeting times shall be decided upon the SGA Executive Board. Sorry, <laughs> and announce to the student body via all forms of publication, social media, school newspaper, website, etc. And we're going to add 2.1 to ensure continuity and rationality in the conduct of its affairs. SGA shall hold regular meetings in specific locations in order to maximize visibility of the Senate as well to permit coherence in operating procedures and shall be decided upon by the SGA Executive Board and announced to the student body via all forms of publication, social media, school newspaper, website, etc. And also 2.2, it is the role of SGA meetings to reflect SGA's main purpose of representing student concerns, issuing policy recommendations, and encouraging student involvement with university decision making, well, sorry you guys, <laughs> as outlined in the Constitution. Um, and so this edit right here is moved from 2.6 to 2.3 just for the flow of things. Um, in 2.4, we're going to remove times and say meeting locations must be decided and reserved four weeks before the beginning of the academic year. We also plan to add 2.6. At any time, a special meeting of the student government may be called by three members of the executive board. In such a situation, every effort must be made to contact all members of SGA. 2.7. A majority of SGA constitutes a, oh, sorry, I'm reading so fast, constitutes a quorum. A quorum must be present at any meeting in order for business to be conducted. 2.8, all meetings of SGA shall be open to all members of the Kennesaw community except by a vote of two-thirds majority of the officers of SGA present to enter into an executive session in which the meeting is closed to all but officers of SGA. A two-thirds majority of the officer of SGA present can reopen the session to the general community, which we've yeah. done this before, so we wanted to add that into the bylaws. 2.9, meetings shall be governed by Robert's rule of order, except when inconsistent with either the cons Constitution of SGA or the provisions of this code where Robert's rules of order are insufficient, the president in consultation with the director of procedural operations shall make a procedural decision or allow for a vote to suspend the rules, which we've also did before. That's it. Wow, you guys are awesome. Okay, snaps. Okay, um, so is there a motion on the floor to approve Article 2 revisions? Guys, I need a motion. Thank you, Senator Ellington. I move to approve Article 2 revisions. Thank you, seconded. Senator Rumba. Is there any discussion on the floor? Senator McGinnis. Um, most of it's pretty easy. Senator McGinnis, Senator for non-traditional students. Um, uh, just a couple of it, it's really small things like Article 2, you eliminated the word times. I'd propose to add an S onto there. And I was thinking also potentially 2.4 meetings and locations must be scheduled. So it the title with the S and then in 2.4. And then there were also two other questions I had. Yeah, Article 2 and then at 2.4 where you eliminated the word times. Just add an S on the end of meetings. It's, it's not the end okay. of the world. And there was also two other questions I had. Um, 2.6, you were talking about a special meeting could be called by three members. How many are you, you know, how many people are considered executive board? Like all 11 of you, that includes the treasurer. So why three members? Why not a majority of members? Or why not more than three? Why three members? 
for calling a special meeting. Oh, I'm saying why only three members if there's 11 members on executive board to call a special meeting? And like under what circumstances is it considered appropriate? Like, for we talking so about? So it would be, so kind of what I, what I think is that it's usually gonna be the president, vice president, and your DPO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't think it okay. was conspired in any way, um, but usually it's those, the three of us and or possibly the Senate lead too. I know mm -hmm. with that emergency meeting that I was sworn in, it was, there were four executive board members in total at that time. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if that's what you guys were thinking. Yes, and it's um, maybe called by, I didn't want it to be like only three executive board members present, um, mm -hmm. but definitely three executive board members are in agreement of making this special meeting. Yeah. I was just clarifying. And then my other question was for 2.7 in regards to majority, um, what like I know you mean probably civil like you might have to clarify majority there because you mentioned two thirds majority shortly after in two point eight. Mm -hmm. So what are we saying for a majority? Like a simple majority, like more than half of the little members or I agree that there should be a quantified number yeah. there. Okay, we can that, look at that. That was it. Further. Quorum is Thank quorum you. is fifty one percent. Mm-hmm. That works. So quorum is fifty one percent. I don't know if you guys want to put that in just so you have a quantified number. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Senator McGinnis. Any further discussion on Article 2? Like I said, our neighbors are going to get kind of loud. So stay right here with me, please. Anybody else? All right, all in favor of approving Article 2. Man, I'm gonna sleep so good tonight, thank you. Beautiful, all opposed? Any abstentions? This motion does pass, Article 2 now joins Article 5 and 11 of being approved. So in the interest of time, ladies and gentlemen, um, is there anything further for you? We have 11 minutes. I don't know. Do we want to? We're good? Cool. We're good. Cool. I'm super ambitious when it comes to this kind of thing. So I'm like, let's get it all approved tonight. But no. So um, we're going to move out of new business into announcements. This is a time for the Senate and also the audience to tell us about any announcements that are non-SGA related. I know Director Watkins had a comment that she would like to start off with. In announcements. <laughs> hey, y'all, really fast. Um, I just wanted to take the time to show praise and appreciation for Vanessa while um, Tariq and I were, oh, sorry, clap, sorry. <laughs> She's super amazing. And while um, I was out of town for a track meet, she took over and made sure that um, all y'all's lovely pictures from Day of Service got posted to the Instagram. So that was it. You guys are amazing. I appreciate every single one of you. What else do you have for announcements? Senator Rumba. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Senator Rumba for the Wellstar College of Health and Human Services. I just have one quick announcement. Um, previously, several weeks ago, we had a guest speaker um, from the Wellstar College, Dr. Monica Nandan, come and present to us a little bit about mental health. And so I'm letting you know that there is an event that um, the Wellster College is helping, um, ha is going to have, and um, it's on May 11th after school is over, so there shouldn't be any stress over it. And it is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and we're just having a bunch of different speakers. Um, there will be different screenings and, of course, refreshments and stuff like that. So just putting that out there for you all. Hope you can come. Thanks. I believe that will be, um, let's see. It doesn't say quite yet, but I will find out. All right, thank you. Awesome, so I've got something for announcements before I forget. Um, so I talked about the L-Cubed Conference, so that is a developmental opportunity for our young members of SGA, so any of you that are not seniors. Um, if you would like to attend this conference, please send me an email of a short paragraph as to why you feel that you deserve to go. 
In that paragraph, tell me a little bit about what your future plans are for the organization and also as future leaders on this campus. Um, I get chills talking about the future of this organization because I feel that each of you are going to be a key player in that. So if you'd like to go to that conference, I believe the conference is in May. The deadline for us um, for me to submit who I would like to attend is April 19th. So I would ask of you um, that by our next meeting, you send me why you want to go, and I will drop that in the group me. Also, we talked about officer reports. Um, that is mandatory of your job. Put that out there. So do it. It's not, it's not an excuse. Your Senate leads are very gracious and being patient. Um, do it. Come on. Don't make us get, don't make us get mad. So anything else for announcements? Hi, Senator Benitez. Really quick, I forgot to say it during open forum, but um, I also work for the orientation office and our orientation days are set and I'm not sure if y'all remember, but um, we do have a presence at orientation during the SOAR fairs. I think it was executive member, executive board members have to go to five different SOAR fairs and, and then um, regular Senate has to go to three, I believe. And this is really a really big deal for us to like get our name out and everything to this upcoming class of freshmen. So I'll be sending that, um, those dates soon and times tentatively of when the SOAR fair will be. <laughs> awesome. And those dates will definitely come out to you guys um, as the summer gets closed by your wonderful Senate leads. Anything else for announcements before we adjourn for spring break? Whoop, whoop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I need a motion on the floor to adjourn the meeting. I sell Senator McGinnis first. I move to adjourn this meeting. Awesome. Seconded by Senator Rumba. All in favor to start your spring break. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> All opposed. Any abstentions? This motion just passed, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attention tonight. Please be safe on spring break.